In this video, John and myself will be breaking down the biggest opportunity of the month where you could have made an easy six figure trade using option or even just the stock. So as usual, all the best tools will be linked in the description. Don't forget to check that out. Let's get right in. But for me, price is the only thing that matters. Uh, that's just the way I trade. Knowing that there's a catalyst is important. Um, you know, and as we saw from the MSTR trade, uh, just because price doesn't confirm your thesis right away, there's always um, a second opportunity on a larger time frame. You just have to wait for price to consolidate uh, and tighten before you get that continuation move or the setup for a continuation move. Um, and for me, that's what would have happened on the five or the 15 minute chart if I was at my desk that day. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of unfortunate. So for me, um, what I did is I took the trade, which was the, uh, uh, it's an NYC stock. So the open was delayed. It came at around, I don't know, 931, 932. So I took, uh, as soon as we opened and I saw NYC on the um, level two, I got short um, just because the prints were all going down. And I was thinking that, um, in the pre-market, I tried it also here, but liquidity was so bad. And I knew that if there's any big player that wants to get out of this, uh, they, they just there was no chance with that little liquidity in the pre-market. So it had to be done mainly at the open, which I thought with that type of catalyst, I was looking at the report that came out uh, somewhere here. Seems, seems really bad compared to most. Um, a lot of reports are sometimes very fluffy. And, you know, there was a nice little pop on the open. And I thought that when we got this down move, it was just a, a good way to enter versus, I would say, just 98 playing very, very tight on it. That if it's bad, it should go down right away. And it was something that was very unique about this one is how, like, directional it was. Like, it was very perfect, like, in terms of trades. And this might not look like a big move uh because we know it made such a, an even bigger move, but we can really see that, you know, it's uh, somewhere between 97 and even if you cover it around the 86, it's like it's a big trade. Like it's a very, very nice trade and I was pretty, pretty happy with it. Um, and I haven't been trading well. So when we saw this chop, um, I decided to just leave it off screen thinking that it wasn't really going to do much. It's already down quite a lot from 105 to 84 and uh, I did, I wasn't tracking it and I think that's where being a higher time frame trader like you are would is always it's always interesting because you also are you often I, I would say miss the initial move or miss is a quote unquote initial move but you're always there when <laughs> the stock makes the big move it's it's a uh, counterintuitive um and it's pretty interesting. So when we come to, to the higher time frame or even this trade, would you consider taking the open trade on this or you would rather just uh, for a bigger setup? Just because I'm a higher time frame trader doesn't mean, you know, I, I can, I'll take trades if there's a, a good pre-market base. Um, I just don't see a good pre-market base here. Um, you know, and we've talked about other trades where there's been a good pre-market base and then I'll get long or short based on the, you know, the direction, basically using the pre-market action. Um, but you want, like you said, you want to see more volume. You want to see that there's significant price action and people playing with the stock uh, in the pre-market. And, you know, maybe you could, maybe I would short 94s on the, on that, after the NYC opens after that first candle, but you're risking four bucks. Right. And, you know, I, I believe in the measured move and I don't like to use a, a measured move thesis here um, with such low, with such low volume in the, in the pre-market. But that's kind of how, if I was going to trade a base, that's the base that I would use basically 94 by 98 um, because you have to risk, you know, you have to, to, to size yourself so you can risk properly. Um, so I'd probably use, I probably wouldn't use that candle. I'd probably use the high this of one? the candle where, yeah, just because that's when the NYC opened. Yeah. Um, so that's why I would use that one. So, you know, you're risking three and a half bucks. It's down, it's down $10 on the day. You know, if you look at the daily really quickly, it's kind of in a free fall. Um, 
right? It, it was kind of, it was, you know, the daily was very weak as it is. So maybe you have those two spots. Um, but you know, that's going back far, you know, that's going back pretty far on the chart. Uh, and, and being, being that it's a name that was, you know, watching level two was really thin. You know, I, I probably wouldn't, I probably wouldn't trade that opening drive. That's what I would expect, uh, expect from you pretty much as an answer. You know, this was a, a good trade, but once again, um, as the MSTR, I think trading this with, with option was really the play and probably not for the initial move, um, just because we have a gap down the premium is going to be pretty, pretty random at this point. It might just be really jacked on one and then getting crushed on the other, depending on what the price action does. Um, but how would you think the, the real trade was, or how would you maximize this opportunity in a sense, um, now? All right, if you uh, were well, at if you, your desk first, that, yeah. that would have been. If you paid, go back to but... go, go back to the five minute, um, real quick, right? So now anyone who's watched our videos knows that I'm a believer in the measured move. So basically, the stock opened at 100 and trades down to 83. So you're looking at a seven, you know, basically a 16 dollar move. So and so the difference with this is is the base here happens a little bit higher than the low of the day. Right, so I would say that the base is really that ninety to eighty-seven fifty area, um, yeah. and I would instead of drawing a horizontal line, I would draw a diagonal line, in this case, like um, a wedge. Yeah, kind of like a wedge, and it's not my normal trade, but that's just what sets up, right? And you're, you know, it's sometimes it's going to be a wedge, sometimes it's going to be a perfect little flag, sometimes it's a rectangle, um, but that's how I would kind of set up the trade um, just because those tight candles were failing at VWAP. Um, so if you're not comfortable with that wedge, I'm not as comfortable with wedges as like the, the as a perfect flag. So I'm going to risk like half, half R probably there, maybe three quarters R. And then maybe I'm adding another quarter R when it breaks that, that mid tier low, right? Those three wicks at say 88. Or, yep. So then I'm going to add another, a little, another piece of risk there. And then depending on what I see happen at the low of the day, I'll probably cover some into the low of the day. Um, and then and then you see that you get two or three tight five minute candles there. I'm probably adding back that risk when that happens. Um, and the reason for that is just because of that measure move thesis. So if you draw the rectangle, if you bring that rectangle down from the original move, um, you're looking for a move into the 70s, right? Um, yeah, around the and 74. Yeah. And so the big thing about this is like no one, no one could ever predict it was going to go this, make this huge move. Right. And, 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 you know, you can see some really big options flow really come in when at that, at that flag at the low of the day on the five minute at 85, right around 1130. Yep. Those, the two five minute can those two green five minute candles, like 1130. Um, we spoke about this, like, a bunch of huge options trades came in um, buying buying puts basically uh, out of the money puts and you know that's and that that could be that's the extra conviction that you have to get more size or put on more risk or or make the trade with options looking for that move into the low 70s sorry for the interruption but as usual if you enjoyed the video like and subscribe i also did link all the best tools for day trading in the description don't forget to check that out. Let's get back to the video. One of the one of the trailing strategies that we've talked about is just a simple um, five minute candle high break, and you don't get it right. You just you don't really get it at any point. Maybe maybe to eighty, um, you can cover some there, but just look at that that blue moving average you have, which is probably I think the eight or the nine, maybe the ten. It, yeah, it's the ten. Yeah, but but just look how it just hugs. It doesn't. It never even tests it. Um, there's, so there's just watching a... price action. It just it's tight controlled price action where there's no, it doesn't give the stock's not telling you that you, that you need to, or should be taking profits. It doesn't really start picking up speed until that 76 to 70 move.